Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Hey, hello. Good to see you. All right. Um, let's do this. We're going to begin now. Sharing the screen with you now. Just give me a second. Okay, there it is. All right. Can everybody see the screen I'm sharing? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for confirming. Um okay. Well, um let's let's begin. Everybody welcome once again. Um I see some familiar faces, some others are not familiar. Okay. <laughs> but um it's the first day of class for this level, which is advanced three. Okay, congratulations. This is the end of the road. Um we're going to begin now. Okay. Hello, so, good evening, teacher. Hello, Byron. Welcome. Okay. Good evening. good evening, everybody. Okay, good to see you. Um, I apologize, but today I'm a little bit sick, so if my voice sounds different, that's why. All right. So um well first I need to introduce myself. I mean pretty sure most of you already know me, but well that that's something that I do on the first day of each course. So Please bear with me for a second right there. Um, this is me. My name is Ivan Donyang, and uh, you can see my um, academic background right here. I study that. Uh, well, I hold a degree on English teaching, OK? Uh, and I also um, hold a, say, certification, you know, for uh, teaching in support courses. OK, so that's that's me pretty much. And I've been a, a teacher of English since uh, 2005. So it's been a while. It's been 18 years now. OK, it's a long time when you think about it. Well, um, next, one thing that uh, we have to keep in mind is the WhatsApp group. Okay, so that's very, very important. Remember that there's a WhatsApp group that um, we should all be a member of. And uh, I sent you a welcome note today, earlier today. I hope you have seen it. Uh, remember that the WhatsApp group has some rules. Okay, uh, the rules are the first one, always keep to the purpose of the group. What is the meaning of that? That means that the group is only for academic purposes, nothing more than that. Okay, it means it is not for uh, sharing jokes or memes or TikToks or any other content that doesn't have to do with the class. All right, so when, if you have a question, okay, you can pretty much ask away and use the group, okay, to, um, I don't know, to, you know, either ask me or uh, some other classmates, okay, whatever doubt it is you have. You can do it. That's okay because it's academic. It's it's the idea of the of the group. Okay, so just remember, the group is just for academic purposes. It has to anything that happens in the group has to be related to this course that we're studying today. So it's it's not for you to start a business, right? You cannot like sell things right there, or do anything else. Okay, just always keep to the purpose of the group. The second one is be polite and respectful to each other, as you know. Um, uh, we don't always agree with the points of view of uh, the people around us, but that doesn't mean that we have to become aggressive or offensive because of that. So um, always be polite, remember, and uh, be respectful to each other in the WhatsApp group, okay? Never insult anybody or never, you know, um, make comments that may appear rude or or try to be rude to someone else in the group. Okay, so be respectful. And the third one is all questions will be answered during class. Well, you can ask questions in the in, in the WhatsApp group. Um, I don't usually go around asking those questions right there because that will take too long. So what I do, however, is I take a mental note of those questions and I usually uh, refer to them in the class and uh, I provide answers to those questions. That way, uh, everybody benefits from it. Okay, uh, we, we get to review the content and everybody learns from the question asked. Okay, so if you ask a question in the WhatsApp group and I don't answer immediately, uh, don't take it personally. <laughs> Remember, that's 
kind of like the rule right here. Okay, you can have questions, you can answer, you can ask the questions. Okay, um, in, via WhatsApp, but all those questions will be answered during class. Um, sometimes I'm going to be uh, silencing my microphone because I need to cough, just like right now. I apologize. I'm a little bit sick. So um, let's do this. Next. I'm going to speak Spanish because this is all in Spanish. Okay. Tareas y evaluaciones. Es necesario obtener el 80% en promedio de tareas y evaluaciones para poder completar el curso satisfactoriamente. Remember, it's just 80%. 80% of all the um, activities in the platform. You know that the platform basically has four sections now that you are in the advanced courses. And uh, there are videos that you have to watch. Of course, there are exercises you have to do. There are listening practice exercises also you have to, to do. And uh, there's also the midterm and the final exam. So the completion of all those activities is what will give you at least 80% of what you need to, you know, complete the course satisfactorily. So everybody, okay, do all the exercises watch all the videos if there are questions answer the questions okay because that contributes to you know finishing the level um next it goes i'm going to speak english anyway so uh you know all homework is in the platform okay i'm not going to be assigning homework directly all homework is in the platform okay now uh as, as it is stated right here okay um we recommend you work on them we recommend working on them right after the class but you can also do it before the class i mean you can you can you can do it beforehand remember that the purpose of this program is that uh you're supposed to be self-taught in other words you're supposed to work on the platform and then this uh let's say or these sessions that we have at night are like a complement to that so in case you have for example doubts or you want to have extra practice, or you would like to listen to some more explanation on the topics, this is a good moment to do it, okay? But the main activity is in the platform. So if you want, of course, you can do the exercises beforehand. I usually recommend doing the exercises as we are advancing in the class, but if you can like do a little bit more extra, if you can do it in advance, that's much better, okay? So please do so. Um, also, as it is stated here, um, all activities in the platform per lab, per, sorry, per section, okay, have to be completed before Friday. And in my experience, it is uh, even before Friday, it's actually by Thursday, okay? They have to be completed by Thursday each week because all that information is usually sent to InstaForp. And if you don't do it, then, well, then you have problems after that. And I, I don't recommend it. Um, also, uh, as it is stated here, um, any extra material that does not appear in the platform or the manual will be sent to you by me, usually via WhatsApp. So every time there is like information that is not there, okay, I tell you, okay, this is not in the platform, it is not in the manual, so please check your WhatsApp group, and I send it right there so that everybody can have it and you can study it. Uh, it's terrible to have a cold. I don't like it. I'll be drinking some water from time to time. I apologize. Now, what about this? Uh, we have homework and evaluations. Uh, it's actually pretty simple. Okay. Um, first week, which is this one, we'll be covering section number one. Uh, week number two, we'll be covering section two and the midterm. Okay. Week number three will be covering section three and week number four, that will be section four and final exam. Okay, so it's pretty much a section per week, uh, except that on the second one and on the fourth one, we have a special activity, which is on the second one, we have uh, the midterm and the third one, we have the final exam. So, so everybody, uh, that's that's about it. Um, please don't get confused with this because uh, I've observed that because in previous levels, like from, from the basic ones to the intermediate ones and, and pre-advanced ones, I'm sorry, uh, it's always been five sections per, per course. <laughs> sorry, but give me a second.
Um, I apologize. I, I'm I'm coughing a little bit. Okay, I'm going to deactivate my camera just for a second. Right, I'm I'm I'm, I'm recovering from that coughing fit. Uh, I'm sorry. As I was saying, right, unlike uh, previous levels, uh, and I'm talking about from basic to pre-advanced, uh, in which you have five, uh, say, sections per course. Now, in the advanced ones, you only have four. That's why we're covering one per week. Okay. I'm just telling you this because sometimes people get confused and they start asking questions, which is normal. And, uh, and, and I have to explain this again. But anyway, uh, it's just four sections. Okay. It's one okay. per week. One per Are week. Are you okay? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I'm coughing a lot. <laughs> I'm oh. coughing a lot. I don't. I don't look very well. That's why I deactivated my camera for a second. But I'm going to activate it soon. Back. It's just when I uh, when I'm coughing, I, I I tend to you know tears appear. Okay, and that's kind of embarrassing. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is this is all recorded. <laughs> that's why I'm oh, turning worry. the camera up for a second. But but I'll turn it on in a minute. Thank you for your concern. Um, some rules here, of course, it's uh, the uh, remember to deactivate the camera when you are not participating, right? If you want to participate, you activate it again. But if you are not participating, if you are not speaking, you have to uh, please de deactivate it. Otherwise, you know, all the background noise blends into the class and, and, and that becomes super distracting for everybody. Uh, it's distracting for the listeners in this case. Uh, for the students, and it's also distracting for me, uh, who I am the facilitator. So, <laughs> please, again, if, if you're not participating, just remember to keep uh, your microphone silenced. And then you activate it again when you participate. Um, another thing is you have to, uh, say, join each of the sessions with your full name. What is that? For example, I'm seeing here, um, there is... Let me see the attendance, the attendee list, list I'm sorry. I have, for example, <coughs> there is uh, Daisy Carolina uh, Rodriguez Mejia, for example. Daisy right now has both names and both uh, family names right there. So that's, that's what we're supposed to have, all of us. Okay, so if you can uh, set up your, your, your Zoom account, to show your full name, that will be perfect because that's one of the requirements that Inglés Corporativo and ISA Forb has for the participants. Okay, so full name, please, everybody. Sorry about that, okay. Uh, the next one, that will be, um, the camera must be on. I know that I should be the first to be doing that, okay, and I'm not doing it, but it's just one of the requirements, please. Camera uh, should be on. Um, there's there isn't much to say about it. Just remember, right? If you're in class, uh, please activate your camera. It's it's one of the requirements. Um, we require your active participation as well. And what is the meaning of that? Um, just participate. Okay, participate. Talking class. Okay. Um, uh, when 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 I ask a question, you know, there to answer the question. Okay. If you make a mistake, that's 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 part of the learning process. Okay. So don't worry about making mistakes. Of course try not to make mistakes okay but if you make a mistake it's only human okay so try to participate okay it's very very important also this is extremely important and i have to <coughs> really um stress this raise your hand if you need to say something please raise your hand okay it's 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 very 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 important that you do that okay um, how do you raise your hand? It's in the reaction section, okay? Just like I'm doing right now, okay? I'm, I'm raising my hand. Not my hand physically like this. I'm raising my, say, a virtual hand. So if you need to say something, please always, always raise your hand first, okay? Why is this? Because when you raise your hand, you immediately become visible to me, okay? If you don't raise your hand, then I only hear a voice and I'm like trying to guess who said that, who said that. It's kind of difficult to spot a person if you don't raise the hand first. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons. Another reason is that uh, sometimes, for example, I will ask a question 
and uh, say four people want to participate. So they start raising their hands, raising their hands. And uh, I know exactly the order in which they have raised their hands. And that's the order they're going to participate. But if you don't raise your hand and you just speak while other people are waiting for an opportunity to speak, I always make a comparison with the supermarket line. Okay, it's like people are standing on the line and then you go and place yourself at the, at, you know, first in the line. It's not nice. Okay, so uh, it's a similar situation here. So if you want to participate, you want to say something, always remember, raise your hand first. Okay, that's the polite thing to do. And when you finish, also lower your hand like I'm going to do right now. Um, like this, okay? Just remember that, okay? When your participation has finished, okay, lower your hand. If not, your hand's going to be, it's going to remain right there and then I'm going to get confused and I will not know if you want to participate or if you just forgot. So always uh, remember that. The next one is uh, always be respectful. This goes without saying. Um, and there are some uh, attendance policies. First one is, uh, what's going on? Okay, um, work on the platform, as I said before. Okay, work on the platform, everybody. Number two, uh, the class is 60 minutes, never 59 minutes, never 58 minutes. It's at the very least 60 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. That will be like a top five more minutes, okay? In case we're like covering a topic or finishing an exercise, we will probably extend about five minutes, six minutes stop, okay? But the thing is, uh, it is a guarantee that all the classes are at the very least 60 minutes, never less than that, okay? So um, what else? Uh, remember that each class is recorded and is available for you to watch later. All of you have access to a link that directs you to a YouTube playlist. Okay, and in that playlist, which only you have access to, <coughs> you can find all the classes. So if for some reason you missed the class or you couldn't be uh, the 60 minutes in the class, okay, you can always, you know, go back to the video and watch the whole session completely. Okay, of course, try to be here, right, because it's important. Remember that Zoom takes into account every minute you are connected. So uh, what's next? We start class today, which is October the 30th, okay? Uh, and the classes go from 8 to 9 p.m., okay? So it's just one hour. And uh, the, the camera, again, must be on. Uh, you have to work on the exercises in the platform. And finally, well, you get a diploma, okay? I don't give the diplomas. It's, uh, you know, uh, the, the other staff from uh, Ingles Corporativo that... Uh, takes care of that, not me. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Before we begin, um, do, do you have any, any questions? Any, any, any questions before we start? No questions? Okay, then. No, we begin. Okay, question. great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's begin. But before that, okay, this is another thing that I always do, and I'll do it now before I forget. The attendance list. It's it's very important. So <clears throat> I'm going to call your names. Um, when you hear your name, please let me know. Okay, you can say present, or you can say I'm here, or anything. Okay, just let me know you're you're there. Uh, we have the first one. This is a name I've never heard before. Avdi Avisua Peña Lopez. Is Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez online? Abdi Avisua Peña Lopez. No? Okay. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Hello, teacher. Good night. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Hello. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. What's going on? Oh, no. Okay. It's not working. Okay, let me reload. For some reason, it's not working properly. Hmm, that's not good. Just give me a second. Okay, there it is. All right, Alejandro. Oh, man. It's not working. 
Okay, well, if, if it doesn't work, I mean to take attendance old-fashioned way. Okay, so I'm, I'm typing in your names because for some reason it's not registering uh, attendance record. So we have uh, Alejandro Quintanilla. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. Ana Did Filomena you, Mendoza. I'm sorry? Yes. Uh, when the course and the terminal course. The course ends on... Good question. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, but I have the information right here. If you just give me a second. Let me see. Why is my internet suddenly so slow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the course ends on November the 23rd. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank it you. ends on the okay, you're welcome. It ends on November the twenty-third. All right. Um again, maybe it works now. Doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to reload it just once again. This is the last time. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to take your names on a notepad. Um okay. No, it doesn't work. Okay, well, anyway, I have to report this. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Present. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. Present. Welcome. Andrea Michel Garcia Selva. Good evening, teacher. Present. Hello. Okay. Andre, uh, sorry, Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Good evening. Hello. All right. Uh, Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. All right. Welcome. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. I'm here. Okay, welcome. Okay, I'm sorry that I'm typing so much, but I'm taking your names. Uh, Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Same teacher, good evening. Good evening. <coughs> All right, uh, Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present. Hello. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy? Well, she's there. I can see her. Um, Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. I think she was connected just a moment ago. Um, Gladys Imelda Sanchez Castro. I'm here, teacher. Hello. But I'm only Sanchez. It's not Castro. No. No. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll inform. I'll inform them. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll add a note here. No, it's Castro. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll tell <laughs> Thank them. You. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Something wrong with with my inscription. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Jenny Elizabeth Santiana Cortez. I'm here, teacher. Welcome, nice Jenny. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you again, too. Well, not in these circumstances because I'm sick, but nice to see you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Jose Raibin Enriquez. 
Good evening, teacher. Present. Era I been and yes. Okay. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Hi, Stephanie. teacher. Present. Okay. Welcome. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Okay. Um, Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Good evening, teacher. Present. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Luis Fernando. Sorry. Fernando Enrique Herrera. Madelinda Yana Serón de Paz. Good evening, present. Hello. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Good evening, present teacher. Welcome. A Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Present. Hello. Okay, thank you. Uh, Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Or Miss Romero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you there? Yes, okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> Barely. Um, yeah, you sound like you're really far away or something. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see you. <laughs> but your microphone is is sounds pretty like like distant. But I can see you. Another one. Okay. Mero Ventura. All right. Um who's next? We have Rosa Esmeralda Hernandez de Flores. Present teacher. Hello. Uh, Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Hello, Rufino. And Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Yeah. Present. Hello. Okay, I just need to report this because it's a problem. Well, let me check. Does it work now? No, okay, I'm just going to report this. Gabriela, I'm having internet issues present. Okay, Gabriela Sequeira, uh, your attendance has been taken. Don't worry about it. Just let me uh, report this. I'm going to do it very quickly. Um, Okay, I just reported it. I hope they fix it soon. Okay, uh, let's begin. Okay, that took a long time. I apologize, okay, but uh, again, there was a technical problem. Welcome everybody, this is Advanced English number three and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. And this is session number one. Today is October the 30th of 2023, so be welcome. <clears throat> So what are we going to do today? Basically, it's uh, section number one that we're going to begin. So uh, lesson A, that's the first one. So how typical are you? We're going to talk about how typical people are, and that includes yourselves. So what's typical? Read about the typical person in Italy and Japan. What information surprised you? So you have the typical Italian person and the typical Japanese person. So the typical Italian person, um, well, I need a, a few volunteers to read this, probably four volunteers, okay? Um, who can help me read it? Please raise your hand if you want to participate. Gladys Simelda, thank you very much. Can you help me read the first two, okay? That will mean the first two uh, rows. So a typical Italian person. Yeah, dreams, uh, 155. Liters of bottled water per year, 
Mm -hmm. And the typical Japanese person? Um, drinks 10 liters of water, bottle, water per year. Mm -hmm. Imagine 155 liters versus 10 liters. Okay, that's, that's a very big difference. Okay, uh, what about the second row, uh, Gladys? The typical Italian Consume, person. Yeah, consumes a 3.2 kilograms of coffee per year. And the typical and Japanese person? Consumes of point nine kilograms of coffee per year. In this case, because we're talking about numbers, quantities, you can say zero, 0 0.9 kilograms of coffee per year. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Gladys. All right, so uh, there's a big difference also in coffee consumption. Okay, the Italians, they drink a lot more coffee than the Japanese. Um, what about the next two rows? I need a volunteer to read them for me, please. Madeline Diana and then Sandra Cecilia. Okay. Okay, Madeline, uh, the next two rows. Consume 0 0.1 kilograms of tea year. Uh, a uh, tea con a, per year, I guess. The, the word is missing right there. Yeah, that was a typical Italian person. What about the typical Japanese person? Consume 0 0.9 kilograms of tea per year. Uh -huh, that's that's much more tea. Thank you. What about the next row? The typical Italian person. Visits the doctor six times per year. Visits the doctor, yeah. Uh -huh. And Japanese person visits the doctor uh, 14 times per year. 14 times per year. That's... That's a lot, <laughs> more than twice. Thank you, Madeline. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Sandra Cecilia, <clears throat> your turn, please. Uh, can you help me read the next two rows? Watch 27 hours of TV per week. That's a typical Italian person. How about the typical Japanese person? Watch 32 hours of TV per week. Yeah, watches 32 hours of TV per week. That's a lot of TV when you think about it. Okay, uh, the next row, please. The typical Italian person. Gets married at 30 years old for men or 27 years old for women. For women, right? Women. And the typical Japanese person? Gets married at 30 years old for men or 27 years old for women. Yeah, that's right. Pretty much the same. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Byron, you, you'll help me read the last two uh, rows, please. The typical Italian person drives on the right side of the road. <clears throat> the typical Japanese person drives on the left side of the road. Mm -hmm. And the last one? The typical... Okay, the typical Italian person finds the school boring, and the typical Japanese person doesn't find the school boring. Okay, well, they're very different right there. So, uh, there you go. Those are the differences uh, between the typical Italian person and the typical Japanese person. Uh, do you have any questions about the vocabulary before we continue? Any questions? Everything clear? No questions then. All right, we'll continue. So what are we going to do right here? Complete these statements using information from the chart above. So you have the chart and uh, there's the information you need to complete. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you three minutes, okay, for you to complete this information, okay, based on, well, to complete the sentences, I'm sorry, based on the information from the chart. And after those two minutes, I'm going to ask volunteers so you can um, uh, share your answers with the class, okay? So let's begin. Three minutes starting right now, okay? Please complete the sentences based on the information from the chart.
take care. Yes. I have a question. What, is, oh, what okay. mean unlike? Unlike is mm -hmm. to state the difference. Um, if you translate unlike is a diferencia de. Ah, okay. Thank unlike. You. Mm -hmm. Teacher, I have a question. Yes, Madeline, what's your question? Uh, what does it mean fairly? Where is it? On the five. Ah, fairly, fairly different. Uh, fairly is an intensifier. It's like considerable, considerably, I'm sorry. Both groups are considerably different, okay? Not like super different, but considerably different. That's the meaning of okay. fairly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. We have one minute. All right, time to check. So uh, number one, I need a volunteer who, who wants to participate. Ana Filomena and then Rufino Milcar and then Gladys Imelda. Thanks for raising your hands. Number one, Filomena. Ana Filomena. Well, well the typical uh, Italian person finds school boring. Mm -hmm. The typical Japanese doesn't. Typical Japanese person doesn't. Okay. Person doesn't. All right. Thank you, Ana Filomena. Uh, that's correct. Rufino Amilcar, number two, please. Uh, it's unlike the uh, unlike the Japanese, Italians seem to drink a lot of bottled water. 
Unlike the Japanese, bottle Italians seem to drink a lot of, of bottled water. Also coffee. Okay. Coffee. Uh huh. And then coffee, right? So both. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rufino. Uh, Gladys. Okay, then Cecilia and then Maritza. Yeah, both TV, except that the typical. Let me see. I can see. Uh, okay. Except the typical Japanese watches more of it. The typical Japanese person watches more of it. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Thank you very much. Um, who's next? Uh, Cecilia. Number four. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay. In the close front to Italian drivers, Japanese people drive on the uh, left side of the road? Yeah, okay. Japanese people drive on the left side of the road. That's right. That is correct. Thank you, Cecilia. Very good. And uh, Maritza Isabel, number five. <laughs> Both groups are fairly different, except for the age. For men and for women. To get married, right? Uh-huh. So yeah. except except for the age uh, they get married. Mm -hmm. Except for mm -hmm. the age they get married. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So both groups are fairly different except for the age they get married, which is on average the same. Okay, thank you very much, Maritza. That was very good. Okay, um, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for your participation. We're going to proceed on the next exercise. And what is the exercise? Okay, take a good look. That is just so typical. We're going to do a little bit of, you know, writing and speaking right now. So what are we going to do? Pair work. What are typical examples? Ah, sorry, Maritza. Ah, no, you, you participate. You just participate. I'm sorry. The hands are up, so I, I got confused. Okay, uh, per work, what are typical examples of these things in your hometown? Let's not talk about the hometown. Let's talk about the country in general, okay? I will say in El Salvador, because El Salvador is a very small country, right? So um, I guess there are different traditions and different customs, you know, across the country, but in general, El Salvador is, is pretty much so very small territory. And therefore, um, I think it's a lot easier to talk about the country in general. So, for example, you have a pet, okay? A pet. I I'll start. I'll go with number one. Okay, number one goes like this. People in Sarbador typically own dogs, cats, or parrots. Of course, there are more pets that people can have, but probably these are the top three pets that people have. People have dogs, people have cats, or they have parrots. Okay? Anyway. Some other people have rabbits, some people have hamsters, I guess, and some people have uh, birds in cages. But in general, dog, cats, and parrots are probably the number one, two, and three uh, pet that people have in El Salvador. So that's typical of Salvadorans. So what are we going to do right here? I'm going to give you three minutes. Again, I'm going to give you three minutes for you to write sentences about, you know, typical examples of these things in El Salvador. And you have a home. You can talk about the type of home, the number of rooms a home typically has, uh, number of, uh, say, uh, floors, stories, you know, a, a, a typical housing that Salvador has. Um, a job, okay, what's typical about jobs in the Salvador? A car, what's typical about cars in the Salvador? Or traditions about cars. Snack foods, what is, what's typical about snack foods? And week, weekend activities, okay? So what do Salvadorans do on a, on a weekend? you know, typically. Um, <laughs> let's do it. I'm going to give you three minutes, okay, for you to write your sentences. And after that, we're going to share together. I have mine right here, but I don't want to show them before because I may be stealing your ideas. Okay, so let's do it. Three minutes. Then we're going to, we're going to share.
Time's up. All right, so number one, uh, people in the suburb typically own dogs, cats, or parrots. What about number two, a home? What's typical about homes in the Salvador, or what is a typical custom of Salvadorians when we get homes? Raise your hands, please. If you have anything to add. <laughs> okay, um, we have a chat entry right here. Jenny Elizabeth. Um, it's a typical celebrate birthdays at home. Salvadorans typically celebrate birthdays at home. Okay, yeah. okay, that's good. That's a home tradition. That is true. Uh, unless you have a little bit more money and people go and have lunch at a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> also depends on the number of people you invite. Okay, so yeah, totally. Thank you, Jenny. Alejandro Quintanilla says via chat that a typical Salvadoran person lets their pets go out on the street alone. Yes, that happens. Okay. Though I, I wouldn't do this with my dogs because people steal dogs. That's not cool. But yeah, Cecilia Elizabeth. Hello. Uh... In the Salvador, the people that usually own a bird to sweet inside and another for the outside. <laughs> can you can you repeat it, please? I couldn't hear you very well. They they they. Sorry. In the Salvador, the people that usually own a bird to sweet in inside and another from the outside. <laughs> From inside and not from outside. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that happens. Okay. Thank you, uh, Cecilia. What about, uh, does anybody uh, have anything else to, to add about a home in El Salvador? For example, my sentence right here is, most homes in El Salvador have two or three bedrooms. Okay. Two or three bedrooms. Most homes in El Salvador are very small in general. Okay. Okay. Um, and and they have two or three bedrooms. Stop. Marilyn Diana. People in El Salvador typical like it like eating pupusas. That will be for number five, snack food. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, cool. That's that's good. Although we're not there yet, but yeah, thank you. Okay, what about number three? A job. Okay, Cesar Alexander. In a home in El Salvador, it's typical mm -hmm. uh, to have a plate of meat Australian. It's typical to have what, sorry? To have a plate mm -hmm. of milk Australian. Ah, oh, Australian milk. The plate. No, no, okay, a, a plate. Aha, uh -huh, the, the plate, yeah, you yes, know. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. a plate, those like black and white plates with. The yes, Australian yes. stuff, okay. Is it true, <laughs> people? Do, 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 do you have Do you have this? <laughs> I I don't have one in my house, but I remember that years ago when I used to live with my parents, my parents had some. I think they had one. Okay. And topper. Yes. It's yeah. And some, some, uh -huh. and some toppers too, right? Yeah. True. True. Totally. <laughs> right. Not having one but several <laughs> okay <laughs> all right what about number three a job w what what's coming about jobs i'll start okay number three is in the salvador full-time jobs are more common than part-time jobs some people have part-time jobs okay but full-time jobs are much more common um what can you say about jobs in the salvador what's typical any ideas Ana Filomena. I think that is a taxi driver or Uber. Uber drivers and taxi drivers are becoming more and more common. Yeah. Okay. The, that job, I think that is Croa in El Salvador. Yeah, totally. Okay, yeah. A lot of people have become Uber drivers. It is true. Absolutely true. Okay, it's 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 almost like a typical job now in the Salvador. Okay, um, anything else that 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 you can add? Uh, thank you, Ana Filomena. If you want to participate, please raise your hands. Okay, thank you, Miss Romero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said that um, most of the job in El Salvador aren't well paid. Most jobs in El Salvador aren't well paid. Okay. Yeah. 
no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment no comment okay all right uh in general yeah that's what happens okay most most jobs in El Salvador aren't well paid but yeah I have had several jobs some pay more than others okay um but yeah it is true what you say is true most jobs are not well paid which is sad okay when you think about it because everything is so expensive <laughs> Especially now when you go to the supermarket, I was just telling my wife a few days ago that when we got married, like uh, when we, uh, four years ago, we got married four years ago. But I remember that the day we moved into the house, not this house, but a different house, uh, we went to the supermarket and we spent about $80. And with $80, we bought a lot of things, but a lot of things. It was a lot of things. Now you go to the supermarket and you spend $80. It's not even half the amount of things we bought back then. Okay. Wow. Everything is like more than twice as expensive as it was back then. So it's crazy. Okay. So anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, what about number four? A car. I'll start. Okay. Number four. Most people in El Salvador buy used cars, secondhand cars. Okay. Most people do. Unless you have like a very good salary you can buy a new car, okay? But for the 95% of Salvadorans, it's a secondhand car. What can you say about cars? Don't tell me I just stole your ideas. Okay, Carla Perla. Hi, Peter. Um, Hi. Most people in El Salvador uh, buy uh, destroyed cars from US because are cheaper. Mm -hmm. But unless in the future can be uh, dangerous. Yes. Okay. I once owned a car like that. It was um, it was a wrecked car. Okay, that had been in a crashed accident in the United States. We they they they, they brought it to El Salvador, and then I had to wait. And I kid you not, I had to wait almost a year to have it. Because the guy, the mechanic was very slow for some reason. And they told me it will be ready like in like a couple of months. But that couple of months was like 11 months in the end. So I waited a really, really long time to have that car. It was a good car, let me tell you. But yeah, I, I bought my car that way. Then I had to sell it. Uh, Luis Hernandez. Sorry, so, sorry, teacher. It's Luis Enriquez. I'm sorry, Enriquez. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, no problem. The most people in El Salvador. He's sick. I'm sick. Mm -hmm. ah. I'm sick. I it's, can't see well. It is the, the fault the, the sick. I the know. most people <laughs> in El Salvador use a car with uh, four doors. Not like in the past that the people use it cars with two doors. Mm hmm. Yeah, four, uh, cars with four doors are more common than cars with two doors. Although a lot of people also have cars with two doors. I have a car with two doors <laughs> right now. Uh, but yeah, most cars have four doors. That is that is true. Okay. All right. Um, any other comment about this? What about... Uh, wow. It's already nine, almost nine. What about... Okay, let's, let's continue because we don't have much time. What about snack foods? What about a snack food in the suburb? I'll start, okay? Um, typical foods like empanadas and pastelitos are popular snack foods in the suburb. Okay, that's, that's, they're delicious, okay? So um, what can you say about and snack foods? Says. You read my, my mind, teacher. I read your mind. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I shouldn't be the first to participate. Okay, next time I'm going to give <laughs> you a chance first. Teacher, but, but I think the, the snack food mm -hmm. is not the same like a typical food. Typical food like pupusas, uh, pastelitos, uh, all of them, but snack foods is mm -hmm. like a, a boquita diana, maybe. Huh? Not necessarily. I mean, when you when you talk about uh, chips, like the ones you get from, from diana, that, that, that's also a snack. But a pastelito and uh, an empanada, that, that also counts as a snack, actually. Um, yeah. when, when you talk about, uh, for example, uh, Boquitas Diana, I, I guess the category is more like junk food. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that is also the same when we drink coffee with mm -hmm. bread. Ah, yes. Okay, yeah, with sweet pastry. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a snack in El Salvador. That is true. Yeah. Cecilia Elizabeth? I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is the translate to panechucos? It's not hot dog. <laughs> no, it's panechucos. Uh -huh. <sighs> <laughs> you ask me that question while I'm drinking water? Okay. I'm so sorry. I don't know. It's a... Um... No, I have no idea. No, to be honest with you. it's That's way too typical a name or too colloquial a name to translate into English, but... Um, it's typical it, snack food. Yeah, it's it's a typical snack if you can get one. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay. But no, I I I apologize. I don't have a translation for that into English. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know unless we force the translation and we say something like, I don't know. I have no idea. It's your homework. <laughs> it's my homework. <laughs> I apologize about that. Okay, so um. That, that's a bad name that they have. <laughs> I don't like the name. Okay. It's it's a horrible name. They shouldn't have that name. Okay. Um, the last one. Uh, what's a typical weekend activity? Um, watch, watching soccer matches is a typical weekend activity. Okay. That's that's one. Um, um, what can you say about this? Ah, well, Alejandro says, people in the Salvador typically eat pupusas on weekend, weekends nights. Yeah, that is true. That that can be considered a typical weekend activity. It's like having number five and number six on one. Miss Romero, thank you for raising your hand. Also, <laughs> uh, also going to like watch or play soccer is really typical, especially yeah. on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people normally don't have time to do this, you know, during weekdays, okay, they usually use Saturday or Sunday to go and play sports. Okay, that's a, that's a typical weekend activity. Okay, listen, everybody, it's already nine, so I'm going to just call attendance one more time before we leave, and uh, after that, we're going to call it a day. Let's see, um, is, I'm going to call names again, the names again. Is Abdi Abisua Peña Lopez online? Abdi Abisua Peña Lopez. Okay. See, sí, Alejandro, yes. Ana Filomena, uh -huh. Ana Yanira, yes. Andrea, Michelle, yes. Byron, Boris, yes. Cecilia, let's see, Cesar, de, let's see, Cesar, Cesar. Claudia Yanet, Iraeta Martinez. Claudia Yanet, Iraeta Martinez. No? Okay. Um, next is Debbie. Yeah, Daisy. Yeah, Gabriela. Uh -huh. And there's another Gabriela. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Okay. Gabriela Laure. Yes. Gabriel. Sorry. Uh, Gladys Imelda. Uh -huh. Jenny Elizabeth. Jose Raibin, Carla Stephanie, Luis Fernando, Madeline, Maritza Isabel, Melanie Andrea, Noemi Alicia, Reina Isabel, Rosa Esmeralda, Rufino, and Sandra Cecilia. Okay, everybody, thanks for your attention. Remember, I'll see you tomorrow at 8, okay? And we're going to go over the grammar section directly. So uh, thank you for your participation and your attendance tonight. And uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Okay, Noemi Alicia. Teacher, eh, no sé si solo a mí no me han enviado el enlace de la plataforma de aprendizaje. Ah, oh, really? I'm going to send it. Uh, let's... Ya lo pregunté, pero no me han contestado. No problem. Okay, thanks. I'm going to send it via WhatsApp. All right, just let me check. The dance three. Okay, um, in the group, I just shared the, <coughs> the link with you. All right, everybody. Um, thank you again, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.
Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye